der dritte Tag auf dem Comic Salon in Erlangen. Hier ist eine Menge los. Hier sind ganz, ganz viele tolle Stände, Künstler, Verlage versammelt. Und ich habe heute die große Ehre, mit John Bolton zu sprechen am Splitterstand. John, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hello. Thank you very much. Good morning. How are you? Uh, well, I, I didn't sleep enough, but uh, apart from Who this, can? I think... <laughs> At a convention, you, uh, you're working all day. Well, I was working all day yesterday. And uh, by the time you get home, you're still thinking about things that you have to do. So you wake up early. So I'm not getting enough sleep either. But, you know, I'll sleep when I uh, go home. Absolutely. And it's worth it. So nobody oh, wants to miss a thing here. Absolutely. Um, I think, uh, I mean, that's why I'm here. I mean, for two reasons, too. Obviously, uh, to promote shame. I've been to Erlangen before. It's a beautiful city. It's just fantastic to walk around. Uh, it's very people friendly. Um, so it's important for me to meet people who has collected my work over the years, especially as a lot of uh, my work has been printed in Germany over the years. So there are, um, there are fans who have picked up the English editions and the German editions. And it's nice to meet those people. They're very respectful. Uh, they almost apologize that they want an illustration, but you know, I'm more than happy to, to do uh, sketches uh, for them. And it's great that you do because um, your, your artwork is stunning. I, I had the, the joy to uh, read Shame. And um, you uh, also, there, there was recently released Marada the She-Wolf in right. German at Alpha Lag, I think. Yeah, I think it's the first time that Marada has been collected completely. Um, I think there's one page missing. But aside from that, um, the whole, all the books which were spread out over the uh, copies of uh, various issues of Epic are now in one place. And it's actually quite interesting to see that for me as well. Uh, and also the style has been consistent. It's all, uh, you know, I'm happy with all of it. I think that's a great thing when, when you're releasing a series and when you're working on a project and you finally reach that stadium um, where, where there's a whole card, a hardcover volume uh, released yeah. that, that really lives up to, to the whole story. I think this is a very satisfying part about yes, it. Yes, because then you're actually reading something the way that, I, that it was painted and drawn from beginning to end. Exactly. And it's, it's a really, uh, you know, it's fantastic to see it collected. Um, yeah, beautiful king size uh, hardcover yes. um, with uh, featuring uh, beautiful artwork by you and uh, renowned writer Chris Clement, who also, uh, who also did the the most famous uh, X Men run ever. Of I course, think. yes, and uh, it was thanks to Chris that I also uh, worked on classic X Men because when they reprinted the X Men series, they were 12 pages short uh, for a comic. So, and Chris, there are always things that Chris wanted to write about, you know, the, uh, the incident that leads up to a, a situation or, um, and this gave him the opportunity to, uh, to do exactly that, to come up with a, a 12 page story that, that he thought was missing in the, the bulk of the story. And uh, because we'd worked on Marada together, he, uh, he said, why don't you work with me? And we did, it was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. We did that for maybe 18 months. Yeah, and the the uh, final product is really a, a very enjoyable book. You're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, still, we're here at the Splitter booth, and um, they released. Uh, I, I think it's the uh, first German release of yes. Uh, Shame. Yes. Um, and it is a um, graphic novel that originally uh, was released by. A, um, it was uh, released by a Canadian. Yeah. I'll explain something about what happened with Shane. Uh, the writer, Laverne, uh, I met Laverne in San Diego uh, many years ago. And he said he had this story that he really wanted me to read and to work on with him. And I read the story and I thought, this is fantastic. I want to do this. And um, I was so desperate to do it that I started breaking it down. I was so confident I would get a, a publisher. I started breaking it down. Um, I even did a painting and a black and white illustration to, to promote it. 
just so that we could take it around various publishers. In spite of the fact that I knew everybody and I'd never, have to do, never had to do this before, and we couldn't find a publisher. It was very strange. Anyway, 15 years later, 1515, he contacts me to tell me that he's found a publisher. And um, the publisher we have now is brilliant. His name is uh, Alexander Fimbo. It's uh, Renegade uh, Comics. And um, it's, it's I, I don't particularly like to use the word destiny, but in a way it seems applicable because it's the perfect writer, the perfect uh, uh, editor and publisher, the same guy. And I'm not bad either. So between the three of us, I think it's worked out to be a brilliant team. And um, once I started working on it, I realized I wanted to go back to working in watercolor because to me it seemed the most appropriate um, technique. Uh, before that, I'd been working in... Well, I worked in everything from oils to acrylic to pastel to color pencils, whatever I felt was appropriate for um, the, uh, the, the, the comic, the book. And um, it took me three weeks to a month to find the right paper. Um, because what happens, I, uh, I start on, when I get a script, I start on uh, breaking it down like this. Yeah. And these are my uh, uh, initial thoughts. And from there, I may work up an illustration, and that illustration is then used is, is used for the final uh, final page. So it's um, it's just a way that I've uh, perfected working, if you like. There's a process that you have to go through where you concentrate more on interpreting the script than you do the story. It's a funny situation. Uh, so once um, once I've done this, I then reread the story and see if I've missed any nuance or, or what atmosphere I want to create. Um, and then from there, I rarely deviate from these pages. Uh, and while I'm doing this, I'm also thinking about color, style, um, because again, you, if, when you see this, it's, there are different there's different styles to tell that part of the story. Yeah. But, you know, ultimately it's all done by me, so it, there is the continuity there. It's not jarring. I mean, for instance, um, I started the next trilogy. I really enjoy the uh, uh, project so much. And uh, in the next trilogy, there's a, a flashback within a flashback and a flashback. So you have to come up with three different styles rather than just go straight to sepia and very heavy thick thick lines you I've, I've established a color palette and then go to black and white for the next flashback it's so that's what i mean about when i'm working this is what it, the thought process that goes through my head i'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to this new uh, trilogy and it, it was some some of the things I found most remarkable about Shame was this um, this beautifully painted um, story of shame and virtue. Mm. But uh, when when the demons when evil comes to the story, it looks very twisted and dark, and you have the sharp outlines, uh, and it's it's, it's yeah, like yeah. two worlds cut together. And yeah. uh, I, I like the idea that that you're taking this uh, idea even further. So you didn't find it jarring that suddenly it's the thing is everything I do is intuitive it's it's not meant for anybody else in a way it's I, when I leave when I finish a piece of artwork and it leaves the house I may have I may have repainted frames or torn up a page here and there or whatever just because um, I'm trying to create for me something perfect and I'm, I'm glad I did. Watercolor is a very difficult medium. It's not like uh, oils where you can take the paint off with terps or acrylic. When it dries, it dries very fast, so you put more and more layers on if you've made a mistake. With watercolor, you cannot make a mistake. There's a famous artist in uh, Australia, uh, Norman Lindsay. He died many years ago. And uh, I read an interview and he said, when you use watercolor, if you're interrupted, when you use watercolor, it's, the, it's legitimate for you to shoot that person. And that's uh, 
probably what I'd like to do sometimes if the phone rings or what, and you're doing a very delicate uh, because with watercolor it runs into each other yeah. and if you don't channel it correctly it's not the effect that you want Anyway, it's a bit boring and technical. But anyway, carry on. No, I, I don't think it's boring at all. I, oh, I think okay. this is very interesting. And the, the, your, your style and how, uh, how everything is built up is, is uh, something that, that, that an interview should give you a hint about, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm quite happy to, to talk about that, that technique. I think because the end result, it's, it's proven to be the right choice. It, it could have been anything. But um, with using watercolor, I feel that I'm really happy with the end result. But still, let's also talk about the, the story itself. That, right. that is not less uh, remarkable and contains a lot of symbolism. So yes. a, a lot of things you uh, did were dark fantasy works. Yes. And um, a lot of them have um, yeah, very... very sexy and intriguing um, right. heroines or, um, or also villains or yeah. female right. mainly female and uh, but none of them are victims or, or are sexualized well, it's a very aesthetic way of okay. uh, establishing that look exactly that's always been very important to me I haven't I haven't wanted to do a, you know a, a female with massive you know body bits you know I, I, it's I think everybody in this world <laughs> <laughs> we, we all re, uh, also read uh, American superhero comics. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I guess what I'm looking for is a more realistic uh, result. A more what we found interesting when we went to when I went to Canada to do a signing, the amount of women that came up and said how much they loved the story, and that to me is really important. That um, what I'm producing doesn't alienate anybody yeah. if they love the story that's brilliant I mean there was one girl that came up and uh, she didn't know who I was she'd never seen the book before and um, she my wife convinced her to buy it because because of it there's something like a 70% female readership to this book which is astonishing Absolutely. Um, which is also very important to me as I said uh, and she told this this girl buy the first book read it if you like it come back and buy the other two because at that point it was only three uh, separate graphic novels and she came back the next day and bought all of the books which is really I guess an example of of what should happen with this book that you it's different here obviously because I mean you're you're investing in uh, you know a one-off and not buying individual uh, uh, issues so I, w I was really pleased. And I, I think this is what, what is so beautiful about this uh, collected edition uh, here at Splitter. That, that is, like you told before, this is a story uh, that, that was meant to be read in one sitting. And I read a lot yeah. of comic books and this is one that I, that I didn't uh, put away before I was done. Because it's really dense, it really sucks you into its world. Absolutely. So you can understand why I was sucked into the first absolute issue yeah. and uh, even with when I get the script from La Laverne and I we've met up a couple of times and we've talked about what direction we would like to go in uh, you know I've suggested things and Laverne's gone away and he maybe taken part of that and come back with something completely different but better that says everything that I want to say but in his style and so you end up with, I mean, this one, the fourth, the fourth book, the first one of the second trilogy, is actually quite violent, which I wasn't expecting. Whereas I think the first series is almost theatrical. There is, uh, you, you could almost see, see it on stage, if you, if you like. Yeah. Because the interaction between the characters, it's about dialogue and it's about body language. So... Um, this then goes in a slightly different direction, but we still, we still have all those characters. Well, I'll wait. <laughs> you're, you're currently uh, developing this? Yes. Uh, I've, I'm uh, the first book. I've done 20 pages for the first book. 
and uh, ev this this is uh, uh, the first and second book uh, uh, breakdowns. So I'm up to sort of this page. I'm really enjoying it. You have to remember that when you sit down to draw uh, a, a, a graphic novel, the time investment. You have to really enjoy what you're doing, otherwise it will show. Uh, in your work, if, if you're bored doing what you're drawing, what you're doing, what you're drawing, you um, you cut corners. And I've gone the other way. I now I, I find it impossible to cut any corners. It's everything is as perfect as I can make it. And you can feel this as a reader. I think this is uh, the. Okay. I, this is when everything uh, is, is done right. How did you discover Shane? Um, basically, uh, by Splitter's catalog. Right, so okay. I I'll regularly browse the catalog because I know they um, they they did a lot of uh, strictly European um, releases right. back in the first days, and um, in in the last years they they try to um, include a lot of. Uh, American and English material as well, right. independent. And um, th this is wh where I come from, what I read first. So I'm especially looking for these titles. And uh, I, I think you're good here with these guys. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, they're all, they've all been fantastic. You know, they've looked after us, my, me and my wife. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we have no complaints. Yet I'm here for another day. <laughs> Anything could happen. But still, I'm, I'm very happy that you still have none uh, after this interview. That that I really thank you for. It, it was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you um, very much. Again, for everyone who has not read it, um, shame the der komplette erste Zyklus bei Splitter erhältlich in einem schönen Hardcover. Um, Marada, The She Wolf, Die Wölfin im Alpha Lag. Um, solltet ihr wirklich einen Blick drauf werfen. Vielen Dank, John Bolton. Excellent. Thank you very much.